What's up YouTube traders and real life traders from around the world. It's Robert Falco from Real Life Trading bringing you another Friday stock review. Before we get started, once again, don't forget to smash that like button, click subscribe, make sure your bell notifications are on so that you can get all of our videos into your YouTube subscription feed and we would greatly appreciate that. I know about 60% of you are not subscribed and that hurts my feelings a little bit. Um, so yeah, subscribe and don't forget to comment down below what stocks you want me to look at next week. Uh, these were the ones that were requ requested um, earlier this week for Friday. So it's only a few of them, but today was another quad witching. Uh, again, weakness going into the quarterly, monthly options expiration. There was a lot of pin pressure out there. If you don't know what pin pressure is, just where there's a lot, a ton of open interest, if in open options, ex, open options volume, and the stock price is near that, uh, it usually gets pinned below it towards the close. Perfect example would be Netflix today. But if you want to know more about that, you can come over to reallifetrading.com. And we had a discussion about it this morning in our live trading room. Either way, a little bit of weakness out there for the week. Uh, I don't think it's anything, you know, massive. I mean, we pull back to the weekly 10. We're at this, this red line is the 50 exponential moving average. What's happened the last few times that we've hit it, uh, we've bounced. Now, could we pull back into the 100? I mean, that would be fantastic. But as of right now, we haven't really broken this trend line. We haven't really broken the trend line. And uh, again, with options expiration, would it surprise me? If uh, the market has some weakness, so all those out of the money calls expire worthless, and then we gap up on Monday and just start rampaging, uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. But if there is a pullback, I think it'll be great opportunities for you to buy the dip on the stocks and companies that you like. Uh, I did buy a couple shares of SPY today, not very many, literally like five. Uh, every time it hits the 50, you know, I buy a few in the long term account. Uh, here's the cues. This one also, you know, again, closed a little bit weaker. Um, did not close below this lower wick from the 15th, though. And we still have yet to hit the 50 on the cues. We haven't really hit the 50 since June 3rd, which is pretty wild. And then here's your I IWM uh, just consolidating re another inside day. Good volume on this candle, again, with options expiration, etc. And uh, an inside candle there. Here's your weekly. Nice little weekly hammer. IWM just kind of in a channel. So overall, I think the market's still bullish. Could we have a little bit of a pullback? Sure, we could. But the, the trend is, is still just phenomenal in the overall market. Let's go over to Shopify. This was requested. Uh, it's come down into this 1400 to 1430 a couple times and has bounced. It looks like. Today, we did close back above the 50. We didn't quite hit the 10, but it got pretty close. Little hammer candle on the weekly, almost off the 20. So overall, Shopify still looks pretty bullish, especially if we gap up above these moving averages and above like this hammer and uh, this doji-ish candle right there. I think that Shopify could have a bullish week. I don't have any positions in Shopify personally. But if I was looking to play it, I would definitely play it bullish. Uh, Airbnb, so I got trailed out of Airbnb. This did trade into my target, which is like around 168. So um, personally, I would be out. That, that would be my target. I think the area to buy was down into this area. So now I think we could have a little bit more of a pullback, maybe back into 160 on Airbnb. But again, if we do gap up and continue higher, uh, it looks to me like it's establishing a new trend and recovering. And we did close above the opening range that high from the uh, the IPO day today and yesterday. So Airbnb does look strong. Weber. So Weber Grills. I'm not really a fan of this one. Uh, I like Traeger a little bit better. Cook. Um, I think that you know Weber Grills are kind of basic and, and nothing super special. At least Traeger. I know they have a, a cult following with their uh, smokers, etc. cetera. Uh, this candle looked okay on Weber. We did, uh, we did not take it out. Uh, we still closed above the open and the close of this candle, but it just, it looks a little bit weaker to me. 
and I'm just not really a fan of this one. I would rather be in Cook, personally. Uh, I tried to get this on the IPO and just didn't get assigned for whatever reason, so I kind of made it a point to myself to not buy this for higher than 18. So we'll see if it pulls back into 18. That's that's where I would look to buy Cook, aka Traeger. Uh, Weber, I, I'm not going to be buying this one. I just don't really see anything special on Weber. So another one we get asked about all the time, and we are actually in a swing trade in our live trading rooms, our afternoon swing trading room. We got that set up on Monday after this hammer candle. And the reason I didn't want to take a break out of this hammer candle, this was already like a $30 range. And if I went above that, and that would be like an extra seven bucks, it doesn't look like it's that much, but uh, yeah, that's an extra $7. It makes the risk reward a little bit weaker. So I set up a little bit of a pullback and uh, wow, I mean, great level to buy it off of. I'm definitely patting, patting myself on the back for that one. Um, but there is a little bit of resistance here. The 760, 761 on Tesla. Kathy Wood just selling the rip every single day. Seems like she has to finance her losers like Teladoc and Path and Skills. And so she's selling her, uh, her winner, which is Tesla. And uh, so, yeah, that's providing a little bit of overhead supply because she's selling some size there. However, we did close pretty decent. So if this one, if the whole market gaps up on Monday, I do think that we could push into our target of 777.77. Again, we've been in this trade uh, for most of the week. Um, but I also realize this is a strong resistance point. This Fibonacci extension is almost perfect. So off of this low, here's your impulse move, retrace, and look at how it nailed uh, the 1272 up here. And then this uh, 76097 is exactly your 100% extension. So yeah, we'll see what happens, but we're in it. We're in bullish. Uh, it's up like 0 0.7, 0 0.68 right now. So hopefully we'll hit our target next week. And if you want cool trades like this, come and check us out in our live trading room every single day. We actually have multiple trading rooms in the morning and then the one afternoon swing trading room. But Tesla looks bullish. So that's it for me. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Don't forget to love life, live life, and trade it.